It remains one of the worst mass murders in Alberta's history. The bodies of a Stettler couple and their five children discovered hidden in a grease pit in the family's garage. The parents, Raymond and Daisy Cook, had been shot, the children beaten. The suspect? Robert Raymond Cook, the father's 22-year-old son from an earlier marriage. The murders and Cook's arrest made big news in the rural Alberta town. But when days later he escaped from the hospital where he was being assessed, hysteria broke out and a massive manhunt ensued. I don't think I can adequately describe it, but uh, the fear was absolutely tremendous and it was everywhere. Town councillor Malcolm Fisher was nine years old and remembers it well. I mean, you had a horrible murder, you had an escape from a mental hospital, you had a car chase. Why it's not in Hollywood, I do not know. Cook was recaptured and went to trial. The evidence was circumstantial and he was only convicted in his father's death. Despite a second trial and attempts to seek pardon, just after midnight on November 15, 1960, Cook was executed in Fort Saskatchewan, the last hanged man in Alberta prior to capital punishment being abolished. The jail is long gone, but the local museum holds relics of his time there, including a piece of the noose that was supposedly used to hang Cook. It's kind of a dark kind of chapter in our history, capital punishment, and it can feel a little macabre, um, but I think it's important in kind of telling that history and that this was uh, a jail town and it was a hanging jail town. The justice system may have rendered a verdict, but around Stetler, it still has people talking. I lean towards maybe he did it, but I'm not 100% convinced. I'll hear a bit of news or a bit a piece of information that I go, okay, yeah, he did do it. And then somebody will say, but what about this? And I'll be like, oh, well, crap, maybe he didn't do it. And the Cook House sat right over there on that corner. Fisher thinks Cook was guilty. About a decade ago, the former teacher started giving school presentations about the case. He teamed up with one of Cook's lawyers, who still believes there wasn't enough evidence for a conviction. The story kept changing. In 2019, the pair held a public debate attracting more than 300 people. The lawyer, who went on to become a judge, is 92 and long retired. He says there were loose ends in the prosecution's evidence. And Cook had an alibi that, if believed, placed him out of town on the night of the crime. And they say he never, ever admitted to me or to anybody else that he had, had, had done this. And uh, I don't know. And that's why the people still argue about it. <laughs> Cook always maintained his innocence. He wrote a poem about it that was found in the cell where he awaited execution. So I ask you, is it strange I'm sentenced to the news by my family's covers on the loose? So you people of the world take note. It's murder with innocent die at the end of a rope. Paige Parsons, CBC News, Edmonton.